Yeah, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Paytm Money Mutual Fund Pay Charsa. And uh, today's topic is gold-based gold, gold -based investing with mutual fund. My name is Neeraj Gogoi, and I am going to be your host. And today we have got two great, interesting, very interesting speakers, guests here today. But before I start, I would like to read out the disclaimers first. Investing in the securities market are subject to market risk. So read all the related documents carefully before investing. The representations are not indicative of future results. All the discussions are purely educational in nature and are in no way an advice or recommendations. Now, having said that, um, our first guest today is Mr. Sunil Javeri. Now, Sunil Javeri is a founder of Mr. Bond, also known as Mr. Bond himself. He is a mentor, a coach, a author, and an advisor. He has trained more than 50,000 IFAs, wealth managers of banks, and sales teams of mutual funds over the past five years. So his book, Make Your Destination a Journey to Remember Through Financial Planning. And he's also consulted to many EMCs with whom he is interacting on a regular basis. Now, our second speaker is um, Mr. Deepak Mehta. He is a business head of with, uh, UTI EMC. Uh, he hits basically SIP, National Distributors, FinTech, PSU Banks, and Private Banks. He is with uh, UTIM AMC uh, full-time since 2010, November. And Mr. Deepak, with extensive and wide-ranging experience over the last two decades, with special focus on uh, sales distribution strategy and business development. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to this uh, uh, show. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Neeraj. Thank you. So to start with, I'm going to start with uh, Sunil Javeri uh, because the topic is somewhat very similar to the book that he has written, Make Your Destination a Journey to Remember. So, um, Mr. Can you tell us something about your book, um, how you talked about financial planning, how you talked about, you know, uh, making your journey in life a something to remember? Sure. As all of us know that, you know, the first step is the most important step in any journey. So yeah. my make your destination a journey to remember through financial planning is talking about all that only. Take your first step. Uh, we sit on a lot of excuses. Uh, we sit on ceremonies. Uh, we say that we'll start this journey tomorrow, day after, etc. And unfortunately, uh, thereby we lose on a lot of uh, power of compounding the eighth wonder of the world, uh, which is which can actually uh, accrue to your portfolios and wealth creation if you start your journey sooner than later. So that's what we tried. I have tried to uh, write in that first book. That is my first book. And of course, I've book, written two more books thereafter also. But the first book, which was the basic book on financial planning and journey, uh, is where we have spoken about the basic steps which one should be taking. Why should they start early? Uh, why excuses are just excuses. Uh, uh, they will not uh, let you achieve your dreams and aspirations if you only give excuses. So those are the topics which we have covered in that book. So the first step is a very important step. Uh, all the listeners, uh, if you've not started your financial planning uh, journey, uh, start as of yesterday, not as of tomorrow, is all I can say. Great. In fact, uh, today's topic is somewhat very uh, inspirational, very motivational kind of a topic today. In fact, uh, next again, I would like to ask Deepak, um, when you talk about financial goals, what are they basically? And many times, you know, we have got dreams, you know. Um, are the goals same as dreams, Mr. Deepak? Uh, hey, hi, Neeraj. Uh, so financial goals, like uh, the personal finance, uh, varies a lot from uh, individual to individual. There is not one size fits all. Every individual could have a very different goal. So, uh, the most common uh, financial goals, I would say, these days is retire early. Lots and lots of young people want to retire early, so they want to create a corpus which can help them retire early. Of course, wealth creation is a very important uh, financial goal. Buying a house, buying a car, a bigger house, a bigger car, kids' education, uh, planning or a corpus for kids' marriage, uh, vacation, uh, holiday is a big financial goal. Creating capital to start your own business is another very big one with the uh, startup culture there in India. Uh, these are common financial goals. But one very important financial goal, uh, which is uh, by far there for every individual, is uh, retirement, a corpus for retirement. 
uh, with the way the life expectancy has gone up significantly, there's a lot of money which uh, every individual or every couple will need uh, to make sure that the long retired years is, uh, you know, they are able to live a life which uh, matches their current lifestyle. So that's a very big uh, uh, goal, I would say. And that's one goal for which no bank lends you money. Uh, I'm getting a lot of disturbance, Neeraj, if others can put themselves on mute. I don't know if it's... Uh, may I request others also to put on uh, mute yeah. when they're not on? Uh, also, uh, as people grow in life, uh, charity or philanthropy is also a financial goal. For a lot of people, they want to give something back to the society. Uh, they want to do something for the society. Somebody wants to create an old age home. Somebody wants to do uh, something for an orphanage. So these are typically what the uh, financial goals are uh, uh, there in uh, different segments of it. Now you ask the question whether dreams and goals are the same or thin not. Often used interchangeably, uh, there is actually a very big difference between the two. Uh, if you, what, what is a dream? So if everybody who is there on this call, and I don't know if uh, people are comfortable with a bit of a Hindi, uh, each one of us, if we close our eyes and uh, try to dream our life for the next 30, 40 years, we will see a lot of dreams. So assuming there is a 24-year-old young person, uh, he would probably see a dream of getting married. Uh, he would see a dream of uh, going on a honeymoon to a foreign destination. He would see a dream of buying a car, buying a house, a bigger car, a bigger house, more foreign uh, holidays, sending uh, maybe parents to pilgrimage, uh, planning for his kids, uh, education, their higher education, their marriages. All of these are dreams. So basically a dream is a thought or a desire, uh, you know, uh, emotional feeling that you want, which your mind thinks of, you know, which you would wonder, you would wish that, you know, you are able to fulfill all of them. But a goal is something which is more tangible and concrete. Something we, which you are working, which you really intend to achieve. So I may have a dream to have a bigger house than Mukesh Ambani. But am I really working towards it? If I'm genuinely working towards fulfilling that, then that's not just a dream, but that's a goal for me. So I hope the, the difference is clear. And goals are something which have a timeline. You know, it's not a pie in the sky. There has to be a timeline. You're acting on it. And you genuinely want, uh, you, you want to work towards achieving that. I hope that answers. Absolutely, Deepak. It's so passionate when you're talking about dreams, you know, the things that comes to my mind is my own dream. <laughs> Traveling all the nooks and corners of this world. <laughs> and so you need, to convert, you need to convert that into a goal, my friend. You need to start, uh, you know, investing towards uh, achieving those dreams. Absolutely. Make dreams fulfilled. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, and again, I, I would like to re request all the listeners, right, any point of time you think that you want to ask something, you know, please feel free, go ahead and ask the questions. We'll be taking up those questions with our guests today. So don't worry, please go ahead, go ahead and ask your questions. So next question, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Sunil, you know, for young people today in 30s, you know, they yet to get married, no children, uh, you know, uh, you know, they have got so much of dreams, and so much, uh, you know, things that they want to accomplish in life. Now, for them, earning money can be a goal in itself, uh, Sunil. Because is it without having a kind of different thing, but they just want to earn money itself. Can it be a goal itself, Sunil? Uh, Sunil, over to you. Uh, can you unmute yourself? I think Sunil is... Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, a very valid question and a very interesting question. Uh, can earning money be a goal by itself? So if you understand what Warren Buffett has said, create a second source of income uh, while you are still working. So that's that in itself is a goal by itself. Uh, let your funds earn returns even while you are sleeping. That itself is also a goal by itself where we are talking about earning money of the money which you have saved and money which you have invested for that to grow further, even if you are sleeping. So yes, uh, earning money, can be a goal. Uh, earning income is uh, based on what you what you are doing. You can you could be in a profession, you can be in a business, you can be a salary class person, etc. But that money 
to grow further because you are earning money. But finally, uh, what you have to do is earn uh, what money which you have earned should also earn further money so that you can create a second source of income during the course of your professional life. And you do not depend only on a single source of income. And of course, your money should be earning even when you are sleeping, when you are, that can only be possible if you are investing that money. So uh, to answer your query, yes, uh, earning money can be a goal by itself also. Great. Great. So, uh, yeah, please go ahead. If, if, I, if I may add, uh, you know, I think a little differently. Uh, you know, money to me is just an enabler. Uh, you know, uh, it's the means. It's the, the path to, towards achieving your goals. It is not the goal itself. Paise ka karenge kya agar aapke paas koi dream nahi hai. Aap kuch usko utilize nahi karna chaate hai. Having tons of money and being the richest man in graveyard is meaningless. So money I feel, uh, of course what uh, Sunil is saying is right. That you invest that money, create more money for ultimately. The ultimate objective is to fulfill your uh, goals. Money should help you lead a meaningful life and achieve your life goals. And all this, when we're saying life goals, those something which can be accomplished while you are alive, uh, you know, you, you should be able to uh, fulfill your goals. Even if that goal is to give charity, I would say uh, it should be done while you are alive and not just, uh, uh, you know, keep earning in the hope that somebody else will fulfill their goals. So basically, you know, what Deepak is saying is also right. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is earning money by itself can be a goal. But what, what most of the listeners would be aiming for uh, is not retirement, but financial independence sooner than later. So that's what I mean. And there is a difference between financial independence and retirement. You know, a person can be forced to retire at the age of 60 because the uh, private sector or government sector job pushes you to do that. Uh, does that mean that he's financially independent at the age of 60? Answer, maybe no. So it's the difference between financial independence uh, and, you know, working as a passion to continue to work or not to work and work at your own pace is what I uh, differentiate between retirement and a financial independence and a goal for f achieving financial independence. Wonderful, wonderful. <clears throat> Now, again, when you talk about goal-based investing, coming to mutual funds and equities and all ETFs and investments, you know, goal-based, there are pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. Now, uh, again, the next big question is, uh, now it's something, the theme which is really picking up in last uh, few years. Now, can goal-based investing guarantee fulfillment of goals? Uh, Deepak, would you like to say something on that? Now, there are pros and cons, of course. If you sure, sure, to invest, sure. Yeah. Before I approach uh, uh, your question on, uh, you know, whether goal-based uh, investing can guarantee fulfillment of goals, I want to, uh, you know, uh, speak a little more about goal-based investing. Traditionally, the investing was where uh, your advisor would sit with you, would evaluate your risk profile. Based on your risk profile, uh, they would recommend some investments and uh, not too much weightage on your goals. So when we see goal-based investing, which has evolved and which is now generally more accepted, is that it is more specific to your goals. So there could be two colleagues, the both of them earning similar money, both of them probably having similar financial uh, understanding, but their goals could be extremely different, right? Uh, and based on that, their investing will differ. That's the most important thing. Now, whether goal-based investing guarantees fulfillment of goal uh, it's like uh, you know does uh, wearing a helmet guarantee that there will be no accidents it doesn't people wear we are advised to wear helmet while riding a bike because it immensely reduces the possibility of a fatal accident right just the same way while it is taking care of a large amount of risk goal based investing is ensuring that the probability of your success, probability of your achieving your key goals, because you could be having lots and lots of goals, probability of your achieving key goals in the timeline, right? I need a certain money for my daughter's wed wedding. Then it has to be achieved by that time. There's no point if I earn that money 20 years, 20 years later. So the probability of achieving goals 
following goal based investing is much higher and that's the why that's why i would recommend people that they should go for goal based investing what do you say sunil sure absolutely right uh, deepak uh, the only caveat which i want to put here is basically goal based investing can work when you put emotional angle and attachment to each one of your goals most investors unfortunately create one silos only where, where all the money is saved for retirement money is saved for education money is saved for marriage etc why insurance products are more uh, you know uh, successful in terms of investors sticking to their uh, uh, path and uh, you know saving and investing for that particular product is because there is an emotional angle attached to it this is my children's education fund this is my children's marriage fund when you start attaching importance and emotional angle to each one of your goals create different silos for different uh, goals of yours and you stick by that uh, yes uh, the goals can be achieved and you will uh, reach your goal sooner than later but having said that the listeners must identify themselves as either rational investors or irrational investors because as deepak said there will be fatality uh, you know accidents on the way that's the reason why you wearing a helmet something similar is happening in the investing world also there will be volatility which is what i would call accidents on the way uh, as an analogy and at that point in time if you panic you stop your sip you stop your investments instead of increasing your sips and top ups etc so a rational investor would think that you know this is an opportunity this is when i should be stepping up my investments versus an irrational investor will say oh markets are going down i need to stop my sips i need to uh, you know get out of uh, uh, mutual fund inv- investments altogether so a rational investor is more likely to reach their goals uh, ra- than a irrational investor so you know unfortunately we bracket investors as aggressive or conservative it does not work that way uh, i can only bracket investors as rational or irrational and based on that they will achieve or not achieve their goals sooner or later wow that's a nice one rational and irrational investors now hum log jab goals ka baat karte hain now we have got school ke goals hote hain very short term ke liye koi koi goals hote hain long term ke liye jaise retirement goals ho gaya hum log ka to agar kisi ko bhi गोल प्लान बनाना है गोल शीट बनाना है वट आर द फैक्टर्स दैट ही नीड टू टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन अकाउंट टेक इन टू अकाउंट वेल प्रिपेयरिंग हिज गोल शीट और एक जो लिस्ट होता है बनाने के लिए शुड आई आंसर दैट फर्स्ट येस येस गो हेड श्योर so most important is as i said identify your goals which are different and they will be based on the tenors by which you need those uh, uh, goals to be achieved so it can be 10 years 15 years 20 years and 25 years also and it can be as short term as 1 to 3 years also so first and foremost what is the amount needed for that goal that is the starting point let's assume that i need 2 crore rupees to retire i am at the age of 25 in 30 years i want to retire that means at the age of 55 i want to retire and accumulate 2 crore rupees so should you start saving and investing for 2 crore rupees answer is clearly no you have to take into account the impact of inflation so if you take into account the impact of inflation in 30 years time that 2 crore will look like 11 and a half crore rupees so you have to start work backwards now and to understand that if i have to accumulate 11 and a half crore rupees which is that asset class where i should invest what is the uh, realistic or a conservative estimate of earning returns on that asset class if it is equity as an asset class if i say i am going to earn 20% it's not sustainable but if i go conservative at 10 to 12% on a long term basis it's possible to achieve that so the first and foremost identify your goals take impact of inflation thereafter select the right asset class to and assume a conservative return on that asset class and then you put a formula to say whether i have achieved in the next 3 years or 5 years time if my investments have happened have i achieved that goal am i nearer to that goal or am i further away from the goal so to give you an example if my sip is of 3 lakh 60000 has grown to 7 lakh rupees and i needed 10 lakh rupees thereafter over the next 5 years period the return what i expect out of future investments may have gone down because the currently the markets have done well so instead of 12% my future investments may just want uh, 
can generate 6% and I can achieve the goal. But if the markets have not delivered returns, and if my markets have delivered only 3% return currently, and thereafter my goals are still five years hence, the returns expectation from your future would be higher than that 12%, it can be 24% also. So that's the time when you may have to step up your investments because there is no way that you can earn 24% return on an ongoing basis uh, if you are falling short on those uh, goals uh, because of the market dynamics. Great. Um, okay, so uh, since we are talking about asset allocation, uh, also we had the, let's say, fund selection. Uh, Deepak, uh, next question I'm going to ask you, um, how asset allocation and fund selection for different goals, different kind of goals need to be taken into account, consideration? Yeah, uh, so what exactly is asset allocation? You know, uh, finance, uh, we use a lot of jargons which make things difficult. And I just got some messages saying that if you can use a little bit of Hindi also. Uh, so as uh, Sunil said, Goal-based investing is important. Hai. We decide why you need money. So that is the goal. Kiske liye chahiye aapko paisa? Second, kab chahiye? when do you need this money? So as he said, gave an example of a retirement or 30 years later, to 30 saal baad, itna paisa chahiye. Jitna paisa chahiye, wo aapne hisab lagaya. Usko, you have to apply a rate of inflation. So if your daughter's marriage is 10 years down the line, and you think you daughter ki shaadi mein 25 lakh rupees kharch karenge, wo 25 lakh rupees aaj ke hisab se. For today's value, it is 25 lakh rupees. But 10 years down the line, the same level of marriage would require not 25 lakhs. So same level of education, higher education would not require 25 lakhs. It will probably require 40 lakh rupees. Which means you need to plan for 40 lakhs. As Sunil very rightly said, do a reverse calculation. There are fantastic calculators available. Based on that, you have to think that in today's history, how much money you have every month regularly. Uh, SIP is a fantastic tool. You have to invest in it so that you can reach at the desired timeline, the desired goal. Now the question is, where to invest? What exactly is asset allocation? So basically, in very simple terms, asset allocation involves Distributing your investment in different asset classes. Different asset classes kya hote hai? Equity hota hai, which is your capital market or shares as we simply call. There are bonds or long-term debt investments. Then there is cash or liquid kind of investment. Then we have precious metal, which is gold, silver. And of course, one is real estate. So these are various broad important asset classes in which one should invest. Most ideally, no one should invest all the money in a single asset class because you are then taking very high risk. There has to be a balance between risk as well as reward. And that process is called asset allocation. Distributing your investable surplus in various asset class in such a way that it helps you achieve your desired goals at the desired timeline is the objective of asset allocation. Sunil, from you, would you like to add something? Uh, no, so basically asset allocation uh, generally talks about uh, investing in asset classes which are negatively correlated. So if one asset class is supposed to do well, if equity is doing well, uh, most of the times the debt market would not be delivering returns. Or if the debt market is doing well, uh, equity would not be delivering returns. So that is the reason why asset allocation is required in your portfolios. And as Deepak rightly said, you can't put all eggs in one basket. It can't be all in equity or it can't be all in debt. It has to be a mix between the two. And asset allocation talks about changing allocation between equity or debt, equity and global equities or, uh, you know, precious metals, etc. Based on the valuation matrix also. So if the equity markets are becoming expensive, some portion should go from, so that makes it, automatic profit booking and exit strategy for investors and then gets that converts that and switches into a debt as an asset class and when the markets become cheap the money flows from debt as an asset class back into equity and so on and so forth so for people to understand that you know they should respect market signals uh, you cannot invest at any valuation and expect that the returns will be there so to give you a simple example if 
आपने जो जनवरी 2008 में इन्वेस्ट किया होता है निफ्टी में 14 साल के बाद द इन्वेस्टमेंट आपको खाली 7 परसेंट रिटर्न मिला है द रीजन बींग दैट इट वॉज द मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव वैल्यूएशन इन जैन टू थाउजेंड एट दैट यू इन्वेस्टेड सो इफ यू इन्वेस्ट एट राइट वैल्यूएशन एंड दैट विल असेट एलोकेशन विल हेल्प यू इन इन्वेस्टिंग एट राइट वैल्यूएशन असेट एलोकेशन आपको ये भी हेल्प करेगा कि प्रॉफिट बुकिंग भी साथ साथ में चलता रहेगा so that is what we are talking about when we are talk about asset allocation as a strategy for investors okay now uh, as when you talk about goal planning uh, one of the goals of course uh, nowadays is uh, as you say there is a retirement you know retirement now people used to look for retirement at the age of 60 now people want to retire even at the age of 40 also right so now yahan pe again uh, we have got different different kind of asset classes again we spoke about that we have got again mutual funds we have got etfs are there they are getting lots of uh, you know mileage nowadays so uh, for uh, retirement planning what and how one should go about uh, fund selection sunil if you can talk about this sure so there are uh, see when you talking of retirement planning aap baat kar rahe ho 25 saal 30 saal uh, ke baad ki baat kar rahe ho that means it's a very long term goal वो लॉन्ग टर्म गोल कैन बी फुलफिल वेरी ब्यूटीफुली बाय इक्विटी एज एन असेट क्लास इक्विटी में भी एक कैटेगरी uh, है इक्विटी लिविंग सेविंग स्कीम्स जो ईएलएसएस जो बोलते हैं जहां पर आपको एटीसी uh, का बेनिफिट भी मिलता है टैक्सेशन के ऊपर ईएलएसएस आई हैव सीन आई हैव जस्ट डन सम रफ कैलकुलेशन मैंने इक्कीस ट्वेंटी वन और ई एल स्कीम्स को देखा पास टेन ईयर्स का रिटर्न देखा द एवरेज रिटर्न of those 21 schemes is almost 15% with a maximum of 21% and a average of about uh, sorry minimum of 12 and a half percent beating nifty 50 returns nifty 50 has delivered 12.3% during this period so it's just a 10 year point to point return so that cannot be the uh, criteria because i believe in rolling returns but uske bare mein hum baat nahi karenge as against that hum jo flexi flexi cap ki baat kare तो फ्लेक्सी कैप में दी एवरेज रिटर्न हैज बीन अबाउट 14 परसेंट और सो सो आपको जो रिटायरमेंट के लिए एक कॉर्पस बनाना है तो ई एल एस एस एज ए कैटेगरी ऑफकोर्स इट हैज थ्री ईयर लॉक इन पीरियड ऑल्सो बट इट गिव्स यू दैट बेनिफिट ऑफ टैक्स सेक्शन एटी सी बेनिफिट ऑफ टैक्सेशन ऑल्सो ई एल एस एस इज अ वेरी गुड असेट क्लास एज फार एज योर रिटायरमेंट कॉर्पस इज कंसर्न इक्विटी इन जनरल एज एन असेट क्लास इज ऑल्सो वेरी गुड असेट क्लास फॉर योर रिटायरमेंट कॉर्पस हम गोल्ड गोल्ड की बात करें अकॉर्डिंग टू दी गोल्ड इज नॉट एन इन्वेस्टमेंट बट दी इन द इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स इट्स अ सोशल रिक्वायरमेंट इट्स अः इन एट द टाइम्स ऑफ मैरिज और सेरिमनीज एक्सेट्रा वी गिफ्ट गोल्ड टू एंड ज्वेलरी टू आर किड्स एट द टाइम ऑफ मैरिज सो आपको पता है कि बीस साल के बाद पच्चीस साल के बाद आपके लड़के या लड़की की शादी होने वाली है uh i'm not saying that gold should be an asset class just for the sake of earning returns gold is an asset class jahan aap sip shuru kar dijiye based on your social uh, strata aapko 5 gram gold chahiye 10 gram gold chahiye per month usko accumulate karke at the time of marriage 25 saal ke baad 20 saal ke baad usko aap convert kar dijiye jo bhi aapne gold kharida hai so this is the way you identify asset classes for different goals in your life if i may add a uh, few yeah sure okay uh, so near neeraj uh, retirement planning is something very close to my heart uh, yeah. what exactly is retirement planning uh, is uh, spaces for all the people who are there i would be very keen to explain to all of them and the importance of that see retirement planning basically it is preparing for a regular steady stream of income once you stop working whether you are a businessman whether you are in a job at some stage of life hum sab amitabh bachchan nahi hai ki 80 saal ki umr mein bhi bahut sara paisa kamayenge at some stage of life much earlier than 80 years we will stop earning and we will still have expenses as i said our life expectancy has gone up big time we are the first generation which has to plan for retirement because prior to this one the earlier generation did not live that long to we had a joint family system today in india if you ask me 15 years down the line the one of the biggest problem india will face 
will not be about Pakistan or China or, you know, communalism or any of these. Probably the biggest problem we will face is that we, India will have large number of people without adequate resources to support their lifestyle in their old age. So retirement planning is extremely important. Uh, message hai, so retirement planning बहुत जरूरी है retirement planning का मतलब ये होता है कि आप जिस वक्त काम कर रहे हैं जिन सालों में आप कमा रहे हैं आप एक इस ढंग से planning करें कि आपके काम करने का रुकने के बाद आपके retire होने के बाद आपको कुछ regular income मिल सके जो आपके regular खर्चों को meet कर सके retirement planning क्यों जरूरी है सबसे पहली बात हमारे पास हिंदुस्तान में देर इज नो सोशल सिक्योरिटी सिस्टम कई सारे डेवलप्ड देशों में सरकार आपको पैसा देती है सरकार आपको कुछ तरह का रेगुलर इनकम देती है आपको अपने ओल्ड एज को सरवाइव करने के लिए हिंदुस्तान में ऐसा कुछ नहीं है सो uh, so, uh, उसके लिए ये जरूरत है आज के जमाने में कोई भी अपने बच्चों पे डिपेंडेंट रहना नहीं चाहेगा एंड वी हैव आल्सो बिकम वेरी वेस्टर्न वेयर बाय बच्चे भी अपनी एज के साथ में जैसे पढ़ाई कंप्लीट करते हैं वो लोग बाहर इंडिपेंडेंट होना चाहते हैं बहुत बड़ी रीजन है इंक्रीजिंग कॉस्ट महंगाई बहुत बढ़ गई है और बढ़ेगी जैसे जैसे आपकी उम्र बढ़ेगी आपका जो खर्चा है योर एक्सपेंसिस ऑन मेडिकल विल बी वेरी हाई और वहां पे इन्फ्लेशन भी बहुत है अगर आपने आपको ध्यान हो तो 20 साल पहले कोई बीमारी का इलाज का जो खर्चा था और आज 20 साल बाद जो बीमारी का इलाज का खर्चा है वो नॉर्मल इन्फ्लेशन से कहीं ज्यादा पड़ा है और आगे भी बढ़ेगा बिकॉज क्वालिटी ऑफ मेडिकल केयर भी चेंज हो रही है सो so, इन सब वजहों से एक रिटायरमेंट प्लानिंग सबके लिए मस्ट है सबसे बड़ी बात है और हमारे यहाँ पे एक बहुत बड़ा भ्रम है कि रिटायरमेंट प्लानिंग उनको करनी चाहिए जो रिटायरमेंट के नजदीक आ गए हैं रिटायरमेंट प्लानिंग दरअसल तब शुरू करनी चाहिए जब आप कमाना शुरू करते हैं एज सुन एज यू स्टार्ट अर्निंग यू शुड स्टार्ट सेविंग फॉर योर रिटायरमेंट जैसा कि सुनील ने बताया रिटायरमेंट सेविंग के बहुत सारे आयाम है रिटायरमेंट सेविंग इज फॉर वेरी लॉन्ग टर्म ड्यूरेशन पच्चीस साल तीस साल अगर आप यंग है और अगर आपके पास ज्यादा नहीं दस पंद्रह साल भी है तो भी एक लॉन्ग टर्म है आप एक्विटी में पार्टिसिपेट कर सकते हैं एक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड में एसआईपी के थ्रू आप अपनी रिटायरमेंट के लिए आ, पैसा सेव कर सकते हैं बट ये बहुत जरूरी है बिकॉज यही एक फाइनेंशियल गोल ऐसा है जिसके लिए नीरज दुनिया का कोई बैंक आपको लोन नहीं देता है आपको बच्चे की शादी के लिए लोन मिल जाएगा कोई और चीज के लिए लोन मिल जाएगा पर रिटायरमेंट के लिए दुनिया में कोई लोन नहीं है वंडरफुल Uh, in fact, uh, Deepak, one of the very uh, you know topic which is very close to your heart is uh, SIP. You know, and you That's right. say that yes, you said about uh, retiring thirty, twenty, thirty years down the line. So, can somebody use SIP as a tool? And if agar usko use karna hai ki SIP as a tool to uh, accumulate uh, retirement corpus, what kind of fund a thirty-year-old need to use for that? So, uh, Neeraj, uh, this generation is very lucky. When we started our career, probably Sunil started his career 35 years back. I started my career 30 years back. Us zamane me SIP jese packaging available nahi the. Aaj ke zamane me SIP systematic investment plan. Systematic investment plan kya hota hai? I presume most of the people know, but agar ek bhi aadmi ko nahi malum hai, to I would like to repeat it. सिस्टमेटिक इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान जैसा कि नाम है ये एक ऐसा इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान है जो एक सिस्टम से काम करता है क्या सिस्टम है साहब इसमें सिस्टम ये है कि इसमें हर महीने की फिक्स तारीख पर एक सर्टेन अमाउंट अगर आपने तय किया है कि मेरे को 30 तारीख को पगार मिलती है एक तारीख को मेरे अकाउंट से पांच रुपया निकल के मेरे लिए इन्वेस्ट हो जाना चाहिए तो हर महीने की एक तारीख को आपके बैंक अकाउंट से वो पांच रुपया निकालकर आपकी चूज की हुई स्कीम में आपने डिसाइड किया कि मेरा सिल्वर ईटीएफ में जाना चाहिए मेरा गोल्ड फंड ऑफ फंड में जाना चाहिए मेरा इक्विटी में जाना चाहिए मेरा डेट में जाना चाहिए या बैलेंस स्कीम में जाना चाहिए जिस भी स्कीम को आपने चूज किया उसमें रेगुलर बेसिस पे फिक्स अमाउंट हर महीने को चला जाएगा इसकी वजह से नीरज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट अ वेरी पावरफुल कॉन्सेप्ट कॉल्ड कॉल्ड रूपी कॉस्ट एवरेजिंग और गूगल करेंगे तो डॉलर कॉस्ट एवरेजिंग रूपी कॉस्ट एवरेजिंग या डॉलर कॉस्ट एवरेजिंग एक कॉन्सेप्ट है जिसमें जब आप फिक्स अमाउंट हर महीने इन्वेस्ट करते हैं 
तो जब जब मार्केट में थोड़ा मंदी का दौर है जब मार्केट में माल सस्ता मिल रहा है कैन आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरीबडी टू बी ऑन म्यूट प्लीज सो जब जब आप uh, मंदी का माहौल है आप ज्यादा से ज्यादा यूनिट खरीद पाते हैं और जब मार्केट uh, थोड़ा महंगा है तब आप थोड़ा थोड़ा यूनिट खरीदते हैं जब आप इस प्रक्रिया को वेन यू कीप दिस प्रोसेस ऑन फॉर वेरी लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम टेन ईयर्स एंड फिफ्टीन ईयर्स यू एंड अप क्रिएटिंग अ कॉर्पस यू आप एक बड़ी रकम क्रिएट कर पाते हैं जिसकी एवरेज कॉस्ट सिग्निफिकेंटली कम होती है सो एस आई पी एज अ कॉन्सेप्ट इज अ फंटेस्टिक कॉन्सेप्ट चाहे आपका कोई भी गोल हो रिटायरमेंट प्लानिंग हो या आपका बच्चों की एजुकेशन बच्चों की शादियां आपका कोई बड़ा घर खरीदने का या कोई भी आपका गोल हो लॉन्ग टर्म मीडियम टर्म गोल्स के लिए एस आई पी इन म्यूचुअल फंड इज अ फेंटेस्टिक टूल अगर आप इसमें इस कॉल पे आज कोई भी ऐसा इंसान है जिसका एस आई पी नहीं चालू है तो मेरी आपको हाथ जोड़ के रिक्वेस्ट है कि कम से कम एक एस आई पी जरूर शुरू करें नीरज आपका आखिरी सवाल था कि कितना पैसा इन्वेस्ट करना चाहिए देर इज नो सिंगल आंसर हर आदमी की रिक्वायरमेंट अलग है हर आदमी की इन्वेस्ट करने की कैपेबिलिटी अलग है बट मैं आपको एक उदाहरण देता हूं हिंदुस्तान में एक आदमी पढ़ लिख कर कमाने लगता है तब तो तक पच्चीस साल की उम्र हो जाती है 25 साल की उम्र से अगर कोई आदमी कमाना शुरू करता है और 60 साल की उम्र तक कमाता है तो 35 साल का उसका एक कार्यकाल है या ये वर्किंग स्टैन है अगर पहले महीने से कोई सिर्फ हजार रुपया इन्वेस्ट करता है सिर्फ हजार रुपया तो पूरे 35 साल में 420 महीने होते हैं तो एक आदमी इसमें चार लाख और बीस रुपए अपने पूरे जीवन काल में पूरे 35 साल में सिर्फ चार लाख और बीस हजार रुपए बचाएगा मैंने एक उदाहरण लिया है अगर इस चार लाख बीस हजार रुपए पर उसको सिर्फ 9 परसेंट रिटर्न भी मिला 9 परसेंट रिटर्न भी मिला तो यह अमाउंट बढ़ के लगभग 30 लाख हो जाता है 29 नाइन लैख फोर्टी और एक एट वंडर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग एट वंडर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पावर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग है कि अगर वो नौ नहीं होकर उससे थोड़ा अधिक पंद्रह परसेंट होता है नौ परसेंट से पंद्रह परसेंट यानी डबल भी नहीं कहा पर जो अमाउंट है वो पांच गुना बढ़ जाता है क्यों क्योंकि पावर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग जो है जिसको आइंस्टाइन ने एट वंडर ऑफ वर्ल्ड कहा है उसके दो आयाम हैं। एक है रेट ऑफ रिटर्न और दूसरा है समय आप जब कोई लंबी अवधि के लिए इन्वेस्टमेंट करते हैं तो जो रिटर्न आप कमाते हैं वो पिछले कुछ सालों में लास्ट फ्यू इयर्स ऑफ इयर इन्वेस्टमेंट में बहुत तेजी से बढ़ता है इसलिए एस आई पी फॉर गेटिंग द बेनिफिट ऑफ पावर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग कोई भी तरह का लॉन्ग टर्म गोल के लिए एस आई पी चाहे कोई भी एसेट क्लास में आप करना चाहे इज अ फैंटेस्टिक टूल आई वुड से that's really really very powerful pitch i think for doing sip so everyone irrespective of anyone whatever is whatever be the age level whatever be the income level should go for an sip now the next important of course a topic is nowadays is uncertainty you know aaj uh, kal job ka bilkul hi certainty bahut kam ho gaye hain we have heard about twitter we have heard about what's happening in facebook and everything so now ek important गोल है दैट इज कॉल्ड इमरजेंसी प्लानिंग यू नो एक इमरजेंसी कॉर्पस हम लोग को होना ही चाहिए सो माय नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज टू मिस्टर सुनील सुनील ये इमरजेंसी प्लानिंग क्या होता है उसका गाइडलाइंस क्या क्या होना चाहिए एंड किस तरीके से हम लोग किस फान में से लेकर के एक इमरजेंसी प्लानिंग कर सकता हूं सुनील श्योर सो बिफोर आई गो टू दैट क्वेश्चन लेट मी जस्ट इलैबोरेट ऑन व्हाट जस्ट दीपक मेंशन He gave that example of one thousand rupees. Let me just extrapolate that and make it ten thousand rupees per month. Ten thousand rupees per month saved and invested for the next thirty-five years from twenty-five to sixty is forty-two lakh rupees. At twelve percent compounding, it gives you a corpus of five and a half crore rupees. This is for the young wrestlers. I want to tell you that this is for the young wrestlers. I want to tell you that this is for the young wrestlers. I want to tell you that this is for the young wrestlers. I want to tell you that this is for the young wrestlers. I want to tell you that this is for the young wrestlers. तो उनको खाली ये समझाने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ कि इफ 
that five and a half crores at the age of 60 is not the end of the story. That is the beginning of the story. Mm -hmm. crore mein se, if you start withdrawing five lakh rupees per month from mm -hmm. the age of 60 to the age of 80, five lakh rupees per month, not per annum. And underlying mm -hmm. is still growing at 12%. Wo paanch lakh rupiya nikalne ke bawajud, which is 60 lakh rupees per month nikalne ke, per annum nikalne ke bawajud, that corpus grows from five and a half crores to 10 crores at the age of 80. So ye hai why you should be starting early. Now coming back to your question of uh, emergency planning, first and foremost, I must uh, explain to the listeners that there is something what we call pre-financial planning, jo kisi ne baat nahi kari hai. And what is pre-financial planning? Pre-financial planning is safeguarding your income stream. Aapke paas income hi nahi bachegi, to fir aap financial planning kaise karoge? What are the steps of pre-financial planning? First and foremost, medical mediclaim jo bolte hai, medical insurance jo bolte hai, us wo lena bahut bahut zyada zarurat hai. Ye COVID ke time ne sab, sab ne dekh liya hai ke what kind of expenses we can incur on a medical emergency. Aap ne jo medical cover nahi liya hai, then 50,000 to 5 lakh rupees jo aap medical emergencies mein de doge, to aapke paas paisa nahi bachega. It can be equivalent to your one month or 12 months of your salary. So that is what I call pre-financial planning. That is number one. Emergencies, aapne again dekha hai, emergency can arise also because of medical emergency. It can be also because of loss of job, loss of salary. Again, COVID ke time ne sab ne dekh liya hoga ke it was very important ke humare account mein paisa hona bahut bahut jada zaruri tha because that was the time when a lot of people lost their businesses, lot of people lost their uh, salary also. Bahut sari salary cuts bhi huye the. So generally what we say, 6 to 12 months of your expenses, aapka monthly jo expense hai, let's assume a monthly expense is 50,000 rupees or 1 lakh rupee, 6 to 12 months of your uh, expense, uh, what you have, so if you are talking of 1 lakh rupees per month, 12 lakh rupees ki ek aapke paas emergency kitty honi chahiye. Wo kahan honi chahiye? That cannot be in investments in equity as an asset class because equity can be volatile. Ye paisa hai, uske upar aapko Paisa kamane ki, that is not the intention of earning money on that emergency money. It can be in fixed deposit, it can be in liquid fund. Uh, an emergency rose rose ni aati hai. So liquid fund, low duration fund, jaise jo products hai, uh, in the mutual fund space, aap usme invest karke rakho ge. Teen saal ke baad automatically, if the emergencies have not arisen, aapke paas 5-6-7% ka return bhi baithe ga. On top of that, you will get some uh, uh, capital gains uh, benefit also with indexation benefit also. Okay, great. Uh, in fact, we started getting some questions from our audience, uh, listeners. Uh, the first question is from Subhankar. And he's asking, Ke, Mera age hai, uh, uh, hai, is work. what type of mutual fund may nivesh karo? So, uh, Deepak, can you answer that question? Sure, uh, Neeraj. Uh, Shubhankar, thank you so much. You have asked a very good question. You have to invest in the age of 70 years old. But I will not give you the answer to your question. See, uh, personal finance is very personal. My meaning is that when we go to the doctor, then what do we give to every disease? The doctor gives the same dose, the same dosage? No. Dawai, doze, sab kuch personally ek admi ki kai sari conditions pe depend karta hai. Financial planning bhi aapki bohot sari, aapko jo financial advisor honge, wo aapko kai sari sawal puchenge, uske baad aapko wo right solution denge. Isliye mira advice aapse ye hoga ki aap definitely kisi financial advisor se mile. Ye bohot tragic baat hai ki hamare desh mein hum हमारे गार्डन में लॉन में घास काटने के लिए हम माली रखते हैं प्रोफेशनल हेल्प लेते हैं घर में नल को ठीक करने के लिए हम प्लंबर रखते हैं बुलाते हैं व्हिच इज अगेन अ प्रोफेशनल घर में दीवार में पेंट करना है तो हम प्रोफेशनल पेंटर को बुलाते हैं ये सब चीजें अमेरिका में लोग खुद करते हैं घास खुद काटते हैं पेंट खुद करते हैं प्लंबिंग रिपेयर खुद करते हैं पर जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है वो है हमारी फाइनेंशियल हेल्थ की प्लानिंग हमारी Wealth creation ke liye help, usme hum wo khud karna chate hain. Meri aap se sincere advice hai, 
कि किसी फाइनेंशियल एडवाइजर के साथ आप बैठिए जो जैसा अभी सुनील ने बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट बताया कि आप अपनी इन्वेस्टमेंट जर्नी शुरू करें उससे पहले आपको मेडिक्लेम होना चाहिए बिकॉज आप सत्ताईस साल की यंग उम्र के हैं आपका परिवार आपके ऊपर डिपेंडेंट है आपके पास एक टर्म इंश्योरेंस होना चाहिए ये दोनों स्टेप करने के बाद आपकी इन्वेस्टमेंट की जर्नी शुरू होगी पर उसमें कहा इन्वेस्ट करना आपके क्या गोल्स हैं वो गोल्स कब हैं इस सब के लिए डिटेल इंफॉर्मेशन आपका फाइनेंशियल एडवाइजर लेकर आपको एडवाइस करेगा हम सब लोग भी जो इतने सालों से कैपिटल मार्केट में हैं अपने पर्सनल फाइनेंस के लिए अपने एडवाइजर को रखते हैं क्योंकि एक एडवाइजर महाभारत में जैसे अर्जुन को सब कुछ आता था पर उसको फिर भी कृष्ण की जरूरत थी क्योंकि इन्वेस्टमेंट सिर्फ नॉलेज के बारे में नहीं है इन्वेस्टमेंट आल्सो इन्वॉल्व कंट्रोल ऑन योर इमोशंस उसके लिए हम सबको एक सारथी की जरूरत है एक एडवाइजर की जरूरत है एक कृष्ण की जरूरत है वो सही बोला आपने दीपक जी If somebody आपको कोई बोलता है कि आई एम सिलेक्टिंग द बेस्ट स्कीम फॉर यू दे बहुत ही गलत बात है आपको मिसलीड कर रहे हैं बिकॉज नो बडी आई आई टेल यू नो बडी कैन प्रिडिक्ट आज इन्वेस्ट करने के बाद नेक्स्ट वन ईयर थ्री ईयर्स फाइव ईयर्स में विच इज गोइंग टू बी द बेस्ट पॉसिबल स्कीम टू इन विच यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड इन एक डेटा मैं आपको बताता हूँ एंड इट्स अ फैक्ट कि जो तीन साल लास्ट थ्री ईयर्स में जो टॉप परफॉर्मिंग स्कीम है वो नेक्स्ट थ्री इयर्स में दे कीप चेंजिंग दे दे बिकम द बॉटम परफॉर्मिंग स्कीम आल्सो बिकॉज देयर सेक्टर्स हैव नॉट डन वेल देयर स्टॉक्स हैव नॉट डन वेल वैल्यू इन्वेस्टिंग वर्सेस ग्रोथ इन्वेस्टिंग में फर्क आ जाता है सो मार्केट की जो साइकिल्स होती है उसके हिसाब से चलते हैं तो ये जो पॉइंट टू पॉइंट रिटर्न के बेसिस पे आप जो सिलेक्ट करते हैं बेस्ट परफॉर्मिंग स्कीम्स सो कॉल बेस्ट परफॉर्मिंग स्कीम्स मेरे हिसाब से इट्स अ मिथ आपको खाली वो देखना चाहिए कि कंसिस्टेंटली कौन सी स्कीम परफॉर्म कर रही है इन ऑल मार्केट कंडीशंस जिसके लिए हम रोलिंग रिटर्न्स एनालिसिस करते हैं ये पॉइंट टू पॉइंट रिटर्न्स एनालिसिस के बेसिस पे स्कीम सिलेक्ट नहीं करनी चाहिए ओके एंड वही क्वेश्चन एक क्वेश्चन है मोहित से कि हाउ टू स्टार्ट एसआईपी सुनील हाउ टू स्टार्ट पहले तो केवाईसी करनी पड़ेगी आपको अपनी Uh, आप अपने एक फाइनेंशियल एडवाइजर के पास जाइए जैसे दीपक ने बोला एक सारथी की बहुत जरूरत है आपको uh, एक केवाईसी करेंगे केवाईसी करने के बाद फिर यू कैन लिंक योर बैंक अकाउंट फॉर दैट इन्वेस्टमेंट जहां से आपका एवरी मंथ डेबिट होने वाला है अकाउंट एंड दैट एस आई पी विल हैपन सो दैट प्रोसेस विल बी एक्सप्लेन टू यू बाई दी एडवाइजर विच यू विल यू नो टेक हेल्प ऑफ thank you thank you sunil so uh, next question is for deepak um, deepak um, of course this question is uh, uh, related to very specifically to a fund so question is from uh, hemanta he is asking which nasdaq fund is good for investment for next 5 uh, to 7 years uh, in fact i think we can talk about etf also if or uh okay uh, so i actually wanted to say something on the previous question but first i'll yes, answer this go one ahead, go ahead go ahead uh mujhe naam nahi jaan liya jinhone ye sawal poocha tha ki wo best mutual fund scheme kaun sa hai itne sare mutual fund hai usme se kaun sa best hai so un janab ko mera ye hai ki duniya mein agar wo if he is a married man shaadi shuda aadmi hai duniya mein lagbhag 800 crore log hai अगर 400 करोड़ महिलाएं हैं तो उन 400 करोड़ महिलाओं में से उसने एक पार्टनर को अपना बेस्ट पार्टनर ढूंढ के निकाला है तो आई एम श्योर वो म्यूचुअल फंड की तो गिनी चुनी स्कीमों में से वो ढूंढ ही लेंगे बट वॉट सुनील सेड इज राइट देर इज नॉट नो पर्पज बिहाइंड लुकिंग एट ओनली द स्कीम विच इज गिवन द बेस्ट रिटर्न इन रिसेंट टाइम्स ये सब साइकिल रहता है इट इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट टू जस्ट लुक एट द बेस्ट परफॉर्मिंग स्कीम इसीलिए आपका इन्वेस्टमेंट एडवाइजर आपको एक राइट right स्कीम एडवाइस करेगा विच टेक्स केयर ऑफ रिस्क एंड रिटर्न अभी जिसका सवाल था 
कि नेस्डेक में किस फंड में पैसा डाले ड्यू टू यू नो रेगुलेटरी रेस्ट्रिक्शन एंड ऑल आई नॉट बी एबल टू गिव एनी नेम्स बट माई एडवाइस वुड बी दैट फॉर मार्केट लाइक पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन यूएस मार्केट और यूएस टेक इन्वेस्टिंग इन नेस्डेक द बेस्ट वे इज टू गो फॉर द इंडेक्स फंड rather than going for an active fund uh, an index fund would be a good idea to look at and there are couple of uh, index uh, funds available investing into nasdaq index okay great uh, one thing again uh, next question is from rajan uh, how compounding works in mutual fund as return is not certain like fd ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ये कोई जरूरत नहीं है कि पावर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग वर्क्स ओनली व्हेन Uh, the return is fixed uh, in fact uh, the power of compounding works best uh, in uh, an equity kind of an investment uh, and especially when you looking at the combination of power of compounding as well as the rupee cost averaging which i explained uh, sip provides you that uh, opportunity of encashing on rupee cost averaging which basically is a medium which allows you to buy more units more quantity when the prices are low so power of compounding let's uh, say as a power of compounding in my view is like life everybody can define but very few people really understand the meaning of power of compounding power of compounding ke do aspect hai ek hai return सो जो आपने कहा कि सर्टन रिटर्न आपको मिल रहा है इवन इफ दैट रिटर्न इज फ्लक्चुएटिंग इट इज नॉट फिक्स इट डज नॉट मैटर बट मोर इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट पावर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग का है लॉन्गर ड्यूरेशन पावर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग का अगर आप कभी चार्ट बना के देखेंगे तो इन अ ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर और टू मच ऑफ नॉइज नीरज इन ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी ईयर काइंड ऑफ एन इन्वेस्टमेंट you will find that the power of compounding actually gives you kicker results in the last 5 10 years pehle 15 20 saal mein aap dekhoge itna great power of compounding ka effect aapne ko dekhne ko nahi milta hai isliye we always say that people who are young have a fantastic opportunity ki wo ek aise time mein aise desh mein hai hindustan mein jiska uh, you know aane wala bhavishya bahut ujwal hai and you have opportunities like sip which can get you a benefit of rupee cost averaging and if india's gdp from 3 trillion is expected to be 5 trillion the capital market is certainly going to do well and you can get that kicker of power of compounding by investing long term through sip into equity mutual funds wow um wonderful wonderful i think we Neera, had a... just just to add to what deepak yeah. just said power of compounding is not front loaded it is back loaded that means aap jaise deepak ne bola in the initial 10 to 15 years you may not see that impact in your portfolio but oh 15 saal ke baad jo 5 saal aapke aayenge which is the back loaded power of compounding usme jo aapka wealth creation hoega that is going to take you to a different level so it's very important to understand ke power of compounding mein aap aap you may be get disappointed ke 10 saal kuch nahi hua 15 saal kuch nahi hua but all of a sudden in the next 5 years 10 years thereafter uh, your wealth will be at a different level altogether with power of compounding being back loaded okay great wonderful in fact guys we had a very passionate discussion today so thanks a lot both uh, sunil and deepak it's a wonderful discussion and i think uh, you know now we have absolutely we are clear about how to go ahead with a gold based investing the kind of asset allocations that we have to do anyway thank you so much both deepak and sunil and to all our listeners for uh, being in the show today thank you so much guys thank you thank, thank you for having us thank you thank you thank, thank, you, you. thank, thank you, you thank you deepak thank you sunil thank, thank you thank you all the listeners thank you bye bye, bye.